Well, I was going to say good afternoon, but it feels like good evening with the darkness outside. My name is Christine Graham, MSP, and as Deputy Presiding Officer, I'm delighted to welcome you to the Scottish Parliament and to the 12th Annual St Andrew's Day debate. Today's chamber debate and the wider competition that preceded it have been organised by the English-speaking Union with support from the Scottish Government and the Scottish Parliament. I'd like to express my thanks to those involved from all those organisations for their hard work and efforts which culminate in this event. I see some very anxious people. Just settle down. It'll be all right. Calm down. Right? Take it easy. Today, you're in a debating chamber that usually serves as the place where devolved legislation is enacted and policy matters are debated. As you can imagine, our chamber sees great diversity when it comes to debates. Some good speeches, some bad speeches, some speeches. I know yours will all be good. As I've chaired many such debates, I'm always very impressed with the extremely high standard of debating demonstrated in this competition. And who knows, maybe you have some future MSPs and ministers amongst you today. But not yet, I'm not retiring. This year, we're also celebrating the Year of Young People, and this event certainly showcases a wide breadth of talent amongst our young debaters. I know firsthand the skills and the knowledge that can be derived from debating a wide range of subjects can be extremely rewarding and beneficial across many areas of life. As a former teacher and indeed as a former court solicitor, it's great for me to see so many schools and universities participate and gain debating skills. Barack Obama once said, when students participate in debate, they learn to study issues in depth and from perspectives, a skill I use every day in the Senate. Today, as we look outside, and I can see the cold and dreek weather has started already. However, in here, it's a lot brighter, as you can see, on the chamber floor, as it's been given over to you young debaters. St Andrew's Day events mark the start of Scotland's winter festivals, of course. The celebrations aren't just taking place here in Scotland, but all over the world. People with Scottish heritage and people who are just Scots at heart. They'll celebrate St Andrew's Day, which is on the 30th, and the rest of this week, and all that's best about this country. I do like the idea that on most cold and dark winter months, we have things brightened up by these events. But the values of compassion and solidarity to the story of St Andrew are central. They're also a big part of Scotland's national identity. So in that spirit, I wish our finalists the very best of luck and good luck to everyone else taking part in the open dates we will come to later. Enjoy yourselves. In the main, enjoy yourselves. And I look forward to enjoying this afternoon's debate and your visit to the Scottish Parliament. Thank you very much. Now, before... Uh, I, uh, before I introduce the four finalists, I'd like to introduce the judges. Chairing the judging panel will be Cameron Wiley. Want to stand up, Mr. Wiley, so they can name you and shame you. Cameron Wiley, former principal of George Heriot's school. Cameron is now a freelance journalist and writer. He was the Scottish school's debating coach in the 1990s and has extensive experience of judging school and university debating at national and international level. He's also a trustee of the English Speaking Union Scotland. I keep in with him. Give him a round of applause. <laughs> Next, we have Victoria Groom. You stand at Miss Groom so people see you there. Who was a schools debater for Mearns Castle, where she achieved considerable success, winning the ESU Junior Debating Competition and later reaching the final of the race competition. Miss Groom. <laughs> we also have Jordan Fortenhauer. I hope I said that correctly. Uh, the Speech and Debates Officer at English-Speaking Union Scotland. Before taking up his post, Jordan was heavily involved in the South African debating circuit, speaking and judging for the University of Cape Town. He was broken as a judge at the World University's debating competition, reaching the final of the South African National University debating competition and coached the South African's national schools team. That's Mr. Fotenhauer. Mm -hmm. Also on the judging panel is Navina Novina. No, I have to take a deep breath here. Navina Novina Sentel Kumar. Oh, thank you. 
who kindly ran the tab for this year's tournament. She's a student at the University of Edinburgh and has tabbed countless tournaments, including Edinburgh Women's, Edinburgh's Juniors, the Strathclyde President's Cup and the Scottish Maze. So you say a welcome to <laughs> Mr. Well. The St Andrews Day debate encourages pupils to join the judging panel for all the debates held throughout this event. So I'm delighted to welcome Adam Mellis. There's Adam from George Watson's <laughs> College as the last member of our judging panel. And I'll come to the person on the end later. She's a big secret. You're wondering why I haven't introduced her. Now, I'd like to congratulate and introduce the four teams. I've made it to the final. The first team are Helena Cassell from St George's School for Girls and Ksenia Kapeljuk from High School of Dundee, which we know as Dundee St George's. Could you just make yourselves known, please? <laughs> we are. Next, we have Freddie Dillap from Merkison Castle and Michael Dunn from Beers Den Academy, who'll be known as Merkison Beers Den. Where are you? Oh, there you go. We are. Well done. We also have Sophia Alvey from High School of Glasgow and Pragna Chalapali I get that right? from Hutchison's Grammar and will be known as Hutchison's, well, they've called it his og, but I think that's what that will go to call you. That's easier for me. Please stand up. There we are. Well done. <laughs> and finally, but not last, we have Alec Fish from High School of Dundee, Fraser MacDonald from Perth High School, who will be known as Dundee Perth. Gentlemen, please. <laughs> now, before we begin, I'd like to outline the format of the debate. I'll call on the first proposition to speak. They have five minutes. I'll then call on the first opposition speaker to speak. They also have five minutes. This is repeated for each speaker. Right, everybody got that? Looking a bit worried? Got that written down? During these eight speeches, I will verbally announce when your first minute is up. This will indicate that points of information are now permitted. That's from other people. I will also verbally indicate when you have entered your last minute in which no more points of information will be allowed. When your five minutes are up, <coughs> I will ask you to wind up. And if you continue further, I will ask again for you to wind up after 30 seconds. If you don't do that, I'll press my ejector button and you shoot up through the roof. That's just to let you know. I haven't used it yet and I'm ready to practice. Now, as you may know, my role as Deputy Presiding Officer, I'm tasked with keeping the members of the Scottish Parliament to time when speaking in the Chamber, and I know the debate will follow a similar fashion. Please do use the clocks around the Chamber for reference, as these will be timing you, and I would ask all speakers to present from your current position. After the final speech for the opposition, I'll ask the judges to retire to make their decision, and at this point, I'll open the debate up to the floor for 30 minutes. I hope that everyone possible will participate in the floor debate, that's for others, uh, and there will be an award for the best contribution from the floor. Now, the motion to today's final, which I actually chose, is this house would ban anonymity online. Tricky one, tricky. So now on to the final, and I wish you all the best of luck. I'd like to call the first speaker from Dundee St George's to open the debate as the first proposition speaker. First proposition speaker, please. Thank you. Ladies, gentlemen, in today, the world today, we have provided criminals with a perfect mask for all their crimes. Who are these criminals? Nobody knows. But what we do know is what this mask is, the internet and online anonymity. And that is why today, we on side proposition have aimed to pr tell, show you why we need to ban it and how we would do so. But first, I would like to define what we see an online anonymity as. We see it as any, the conduction of any online operation where you're assuming an identity on a public for forum, including the dark web. And we're kind of setting this in Western countries as we see that in many illiberal countries, it's hard to be anonymous where because, um, and since governments can track IP addresses, this is for ease of public identification. We would do this in the same way that um, banking is done and so therefore using a fake name would be uh, deemed identity fraud. Now on to my main point case today, which is the online bullying and how this motion can help prevent it and make One it minute. weaker. It, online bullying is a massive issue. That's true. We accept that as fact. And 
This, is, this happens because using fake names online is, is used as a method of masking your guilt. And online, you say things you wouldn't say face to face as you don't necessarily, as you don't necessarily know who the person is. And even if you do, there is the divide of being online and the separation of your online life from your real life. This motion faces by creating a human identity behind every user, and it makes it easier to identify both the user, b bully and the victim. This help make, helps both the bully and the victim as it allows the victim to, e to be e more easily supported, and it also makes it easier to, to figure out the kind of bully's issues and work through them with them, and therefore make them kind of happier and like, less likely to commit these crimes as well, which we see as uh, beneficial. It also acts as a deterrent, as because when you bully someone, you, if you know you're going to be caught, you can be traced back to you and you're more likely to think twice, and we believe in a society where people are more cautious of their actions and act for the benefit of society rather than themselves. Um, we see like the harms of online bullying is massive, but one of the most important that we see is the impact it can have on mental health, both like of the victim and the bully. The bully's mental health will like, kind of, their guilt will increase and they'll feel kind of worse about themselves because of and the harm they cause other people, even though they may be using it as a coping method to work through their own issues, but under this motion we see that it's easier to give them the help they need. No thank you. We also find that it, un it makes the vic it can, uh, online bullying can worsen victims' mental health under the status quo, as it kind of um, allows them to not necessarily know exactly who's targeting them, and instead it feels like a massive on online presence who are not actually necessarily named or you can't give a face to are doing this to you, and we believe that by gi like giving a human identity behind every user, this stops this. But also, like in ex most extreme cases, this anonymity and this worsening mental health can lead to horrible issues such as like suicide in extreme cases, and we believe that this is horrible and needs to be fixed. Yes, please. Sorry, sorry, if you, uh, um, if you do, please stand up and do your point of information. Yes. If people are still bullied in real life face to face, why do you think making them not anonymous online would stop bullies? Then people decent George's. We believe that online bullying is the worst form of bullying as currently. It's anonymous and you don't know necessarily who's doing it. Whereas with real life face-to-face -face bullying, there's the kind of, you see the person, you see how you're impacting them. And, it, and there's also the fact that people around you can, are more likely to not want to get involved or not, more likely to not want to put extra pressure on you as an individual and make this kind of bullying even worse. And we believe that even in real life bullying, we believe, which is bad, we believe that it's easier for people to intervene and help at both parties, whereas online, with anonymity, we believe that that is harsh, hard enough to do it's possible. We believe that the people who are impacted by online bullying, in can, like the, the, the extreme case where it can lead to suicide, could change One the world. Ago. And we cannot fail these young people. And that is why we need to cut this like at the root and stop this problem from occurring. And we see that this only happens at our side of the house. And therefore, it is important that we um, ban on anonymity online. Furthermore, kind of like the role of the government, we see that the role of the government is to protect its citizens from harms and to provide them security. And even if they're public figures, because like online bullying can easily turn into online harassment of like public figures. And we believe that by banning online anonymity, it makes it hard for people to create countless like fake accounts and like bot accounts to harass certain individuals. And we believe that that kind of leads to them having less pressure than put by society as already in like horribly pressureful situations which are negatively which are detrimental to them even though they're public figures um, and kind of if we we see on the side of the house that we can do something to help these people as the government and if we can do something why shouldn't we when people's lives are on the lines when people's happiness is on the line we need to take action and regulating online use is both we see is kind of like currently impossible is an impossible solution as you can't fully regulate anything online and no, it's not enough you and must conclude online we are always being watched and regulated by others and it has not done anything to so, so far we need to do something to stop this that and that is why we need to ban online anonymity thank you very much it's tough being the first speaker round of applause when you're, when you're standing to do a point of information, if it's obvious the speaker's not taking it, please sit down. That's why I'm indicating. If the speaker does take it, we'll do what we do in Parliament, which is the person making the point of information is on their feet, but the speaker sits down. So we don't have two people on their feet at the same time. OK? Right. I now call uh, the first speaker from Merkison Weir's Den to respond as the first opposition speaker. First opposition speaker, please. <laughs> Ladies, gentlemen, Madam Chair, I stand before you today as a voice of neutrality in a debate that chooses to force people to pick their sides in today's political atmosphere. 
I will be analyzing the overarching theme for this motion, focusing more on our, how it goes against our basic constitutional freedoms and how the failures of ban culture fail to address the current issues of the time, while my partner will be drilling further down into the minutiae of this argument, analyzing smaller cases as well as the impacts on the people who use, this in who use the internet. But first, I shall indulge in some much needed rebuttal. Now, the previous speaker has said many times that we need to address the people behind these attacks, that these are the people who are using this anonymity and that they're the ones protected under it. But we on the opposition see this as a fatal misunderstanding. These are not the only people protected by online anonymity. There are plenty of perfectly innocent users who use this anonymity in order to feel more comfortable, as my partner will drill into further. Not only this, but journalism, for example, is largely based upon talking to people who will often wish to keep their anonymity intact. These are people who the, this motion would choose to reveal and therefore lose their protections, exposing them to many harmful aspects of society. Um, no, thank you. Now to move on to my substantive case. Our base, the basic issue with this motion is very simple. It is not constitutionally correct to allow people to take away people's basic right to choose what they say online. Whether they choose to disclose their identity is entirely up to them. There are people who use this badly, and we are, of course, recommending further address for these issues. What happens in today's culture is truly, is truly abysmal, and we need to address these issues further. But an outright ban not only hurts these trolls, it also helps them. It helps them target the people who they want to fight, and it gives them no escape. It gives them no protection, and it gives them no comfort. Not only this, but there is an important thing to understand about today's internet, and that's that you're not always talking to a real person. No, thank you. Today's internet culture is largely based in, its main issues are, we see as political radicalization. When people see their point of view suppressed, and people will begin to see this, if this motion is brought into force because people feel they're not properly represented online, then those people will feel that their, that their freedom's being limited, and they will be further radicalized. They will be pushed towards groups which appear sympathetic, and it is these groups which are to the true detriment of our, of our society. Not only this, but day to day, your own internet usage, whether or not you know it, is ultimately designed in order to further polarize politics. It has been proven and disclosed that current advertising algorithms, for example, will, lead, will lead their users down a more political rabbit hole. If you watch a right-wing video, it will, it will present you with some more extremist content. These are the issues we need to face today, and they are not people that can be quickly unmasked. These are things that have been placed out into the world and have no true identity. These are things that you need to address at their own level, not on the level of people. Yes. Mutually exclusive. Could I, just, sorry, could I just ask you to sit down as, we, as I said when you're taking it? Thank you. Make your point. Because this is mutually exclusive. It exists on both sides of the debate, hence your point does not stand. We understand that the major issue that the proposition is attempting to state is in fact misinterpreted. We do not see the two things as mutually existing. We see the main issue with current politics being these bots and in fact the main people who are doing these cyberbullying ultimately have no identity that one can find. Therefore, why introduce a ban that limits people's personal freedoms, that will ultimately cause these people to suffer, as my partner Michael will go into later, when really you are not even addressing the fine points of the issue? This is a fatal misunderstanding of today's culture, and it's one that could really lead to terrible things in politics. This brings me on to my final point, namely the theme of disillusionment. When you take away people's constitutional freedoms... One minute. When you tell them that, for example, comments they make online will now be disclosed to people, they feel like they're being attacked for those comments. And let's face it, this motion ultimately will re recommend those people. People may not understand the effect they have, and it is these people who we need to talk to, not outright ban or remove all anonymity from. These people will have fundamental misunderstandings of these things. And if they feel that they are not being properly, properly represented, then it will only get worse. They'll be pushed further down these extremist routes, further towards further extremist organizations, and ultimately, it will lead to the kind of political situation which has led to so many of the issues in today's society. Thank you for listening, and I urge you to oppose the motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. I now, can now call on the second proposition, speaker from Dundee St. George's, to give us their views, please. Thank you. Imagine a world in which criminals have an impenetrable mask. 
You can't see them. You don't know who they are. They can organize crime. They could go out and hurt people. The police can't catch them because they can't see them. They don't know who they are. This world is called the internet under the status quo. What we need to do and what we do on our side is to unmask these criminals to help the victims and uh, to also prevent crime from happening in the first place. What is, what, so my one main point today will be how this motion is going to be stopping the dark web and stopping organized crime, which is going to benefit victims. But before I go on to that, I'm going to go on to some rebuttal. So we heard from our opposition speaker how this um, about like how we're not focusing on the right issues, we should be focusing on like extremist politics. Like we can do that as well on our side of the house. In fact, we do that better on our side of the house because you know the people who are like spreading these rumors and who are like posting these videos because we can actually like catch them. We do that better on our side of the house anyway. We also heard about like you know how this actually limits freedoms of speech. And um, no, thank you. And um, we feel like we can still express ourselves. Like you could still state your opinion. You're just like hurt, and you can you can only state opinion that doesn't hurt people. We think this is a good thing. And even at their best, even if we accept it does slightly infringe upon your freedom of speech, we already do this uh, this same thing. We already like sort of limit your freedom of speech so you don't get harmed by like you know hate speech. This is just going to be like a similar thing. Um, no, thank you. So now onto my main case about how this motion is going to stop the dark web and it's going to be stopping more organized crime. So why is this true? Currently, criminals are able to like mask their identity online. Nobody knows who they are. Like you know, and like, and they have an incentive to start crime in the first place because they know they can like you know very easily get away with it. No, thank you. Okay. So um. Uh, and uh, this also leads to like the dark web. So like, what is the dark web? It's, it's like, you know, a, a place in the internet where there's lots of crimes, like for example, drugs and things like that. Like, and people are getting away with it because we don't know who they are. It's completely unacceptable. Right? So how do we actually stop this under our side of the house? Police can find it easier to track these criminals. How? Because like they know the name of them, they can find it easier, like you know, in your local area, if you know that person, you, you can like talk to them. People can actually report these criminals. Like for example, if you know someone who's a criminal, you can report it easier because you know who they are. We get more crime reporting, we get more police dealing with these crimes. And um, uh, yes, please. Yes. If these are criminals who are exploiting this anonymity, who's to say they will disclose their true identity? Surely they're not going to be afraid of identity crime. Well, like... Dundee St George's. Well, like, we feel like it's going to be, like, a lot less. And as we progress, like, as my partner said, we're going to find it easier to, like, track anonymous sources. And we still get that under, under far less extent on our side of the house because it's, like, actually illegal now. Okay, so uh, continuing on to my case. This also, like, deters criminals from starting in the first place. So, like, for example, if you're named, you're also, like, uh, shamed if you do a crime. Like, you're scared to start in the first place because you're, no, you're going to be get caught easier, right? It's going to be stopping the, the dark web and other things, like, and no thank you, from happening in the first place because and um, people on the, around you know who you are like you know people who like you know who you, who you know who you are and can identify you much much easier so we actually get more a uh, tracking of online crime and we actually see a, a, mar a large decrease in the dark web so what are the harms of the dark web why do we actually want to stop this in the first place like for uh, like we feel like a major group in this debate is the victims of organized crime like for example international terrorism or international like you know uh, uh, drug uh, sales and things like that these are people who are like impacted by the dark web and like uh, people who are impacted by criminals who are able to organize themselves online and who you know who we give an, an anonymous account to right um, and, and and we also help future victims under our side of the house so like people who haven't been victims of organized online crime yet but like you know uh, but who who will be because we stop more crime from happening in the first place Last under minute. our side of the house so why is this important because it's ultimately the government's job to like protect people from harm it's the government's job to protect someone from hurting someone else like and as my partner said we stop them from like actually hurting their feelings for like online bullying like you know stopping them hurting their mental health but we're also stopping people like uh, protecting them from crime like we're protecting them from like online and um, you know the dark web and on organized crime which is can happen way easier under under status quo which we stop under this motion so um also, because we have less crime in our side of the house, we think this is an incredibly impactful point because it's the government's job to help these victims. So let's just weigh up the debate so far. Let's just weigh up what we heard from the opposition. So, um, so the impacts when we heard from the opposition is like limiting freedom of speech and like not tackling like political extremism. Like we, I already disproved these points, but even if we take them at their best, like 
uh, we still get w the impacts that we brought to you, we think are far more important because we brought to you the impact of less people are being harmed by online crime. We brought to it, like our, my partner told you why this is the most important point in this debate because you know it's uh, actually hurting people's mental health and it's the government's job to stop this from happening and we can't just regulate it, we need to ban it. And also um, less people are harmed by crime which is an incredible problem incredible point as well. So it's because we unmask the criminals, we don't let them get away with it, that I'm very proud to propose today. You must conclude now. I'm very proud to propose. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, can I now ask the second opposition speaker from Merckx and Beersden to speak, please? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's my pleasure to continue the debate for side opposition. Now, you heard my partner, Freddie, speak on freedom of speech, constitutional rights. I'm trying to bring things more personal to you this evening. But I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do this by... I'm going to provide some anecdotal evidence as to why freedom of uh, speech is so important to the public. But first, I would like to engage in some rebuttal. So, it was first said by uh, the opening uh, proposition that online separation due to anonymity is what causes bullying. In fact, anonymous or not, cyberbullying still occurs. And don't get me wrong, we condemn you for your efforts, but this wouldn't actually tackle the issue of cyberbullying. Anonymity is only a very small part of a very large battle. You then went on to talk about how it's very hard to police this and uh, uh, what happens. Um, basically, I ask you this. What happens if you just know the name? The second proposition speaker, you mentioned, and you said it yourself, that policing the internet One is a minute. very, very hard thing to do. Um, so how I ask you, can you properly police the internet if the only information that you're suggesting that we have of them is their name? Ladies and gentlemen, this evening, when we're in preparation for this, I searched my name up on Facebook. There's 42 Michael Dunn's on Facebook. You have the information that Michael Dunn committed a crime of cyberbullying. Fantastic. You've now got one of 42 to search down. I don't think that's very practical, ladies and gentlemen. Now onto my substantive case. Ladies and gentlemen, I've just started telling you that really, whilst the, the method behind this is correct, it, it doesn't achieve much at all. How are they to know that the person behind the screen is actually the name that they're using online at all? So, are people really expected in today's society to hand over their passports, hand over ID cards to Facebook, to large corporations, just so that we can ensure that we have... No, thank you. Just to ensure that we have all the correct data in order to uh, correctly police the internet. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there's already all kinds of problems in today's society with sharing information and too much information with large corporations. And really, I feel that people can hide behind these fake names and these aliases to hide their identity further. So really, the lengths that we would have to go to to follow side propositions uh, motion, really, it's too far. And no, thank you. It's just, it's not an effective use. And I then carried on in my rebuttal. The anonymity doesn't appear to be the only factor that reduces online nastiness and that it's the, the sole root cause of cyberbullying. Ladies and gentlemen, the cause of cyberbullying, in my opinion, is the separation. You are not face to face. There is no direct contact with the person. Yes, okay. Yes, Dundee St. George. Don't you agree that by removing this anonymity, you are creating a human identity behind each user and therefore you are decreasing the separation between online life and real life? I do understand the point you're making, but like I identified, you're suggesting that all we have is a name, and names in relative terms when there's 42 Michael Dunn's out there are relatively meaningless, so I don't feel that this actually does tackle the issue properly. And what I was saying was that stripping people of their anonymity, it wouldn't solve the issue that bullying is arising on the internet. It's It perhaps would allow you the, the peace of mind that someone out there, and you would have their name, the police, without their address, with, without this location, they can't actually go and they can't arrest them in real life. Can they arrest them online? Well, what would that look like, ladies and gentlemen? I ask you that. No, thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to ask you this. What about, say, the gay person from a deeply religious background? They're using their anonymity as a lifeline. We can't strip this lifeline away from them. We don't understand the consequences that this could have in a person's life. If they are using their anonymity as a force Last for minute. good online in order to engage with others, to get support, 
help that they need. You can't just have a blanket ban and remove all anonymity. Ladies and gentlemen, the consequences that it could have on this person's life, this person's way of life and the way they go about it are huge. We're talking here, a religious community could lead to their families, ladies and gentlemen. This is also used to encourage people to express themselves. People can be, you can be you when you're online, ladies and gentlemen. It enhances creativity and it's a, it provides people an opportunity to share perhaps a self that they're not comfortable with, not comfortable sharing with an employer, with people that they work with, that people can find so easily, perhaps in the real world. Anonymity is letting them be them, and this is irreplaceable for their mental health. It's like people use a diary in order to express themselves, and that this diary lets them really release their feelings, release their emotions. And this is essential, this venting of feelings is so vital for a person's well-being, ladies and gentlemen. I'd just like to conclude by saying this, ladies and gentlemen, anonymity is a lifeline, a method of freedom of expression that protects not only those that are in need, but those that are the most vulnerable in today's society through mental health issues. Ladies and gentlemen, we on the opposition can't stress enough the benefits that um, this anonymity is providing to society today. And I beg you, please oppose this motion. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, I want to thank both teams. Now, can I ask the first speaker from Hutchison's in High School, Glasgow, to open the case for the closing proposition team, please. So, thank you very much. Good evening, ladies, gentlemen, esteemed chairs, fellow debaters. Today, we here on Team Proposition are truly fighting for those who are victims of the incredibly detrimental impacts that online bullying and online crime and fraud can have on those who use it. Now, the internet has become a major part of society and millions, if not billions, of people around the world use it. However, and the, one who, the ones who initially invented it, the pioneers of this incredible tool, this outlet for information, this outlet for incredible communication, could not have possibly dreamed of the, the resulting um, you know, negative, negativity that has essentially come from it. Now, it has been exploited by those in society who use it for organized online crime, who as my as, um, second speaker already said, um, especially on the dark web, they use it to sell um, illegal things that do infiltrate our communities and our organized crime um, kind of missions that end up being incredibly difficult for the police to decipher One at minute. the moment. And these things are being essentially done through um, those who are committing these crimes, being anonymous online, and although um, Team Opposition have outlined the fact that, oh yes, there, but there are 40 different options for those, to, uh, for those who, um, who might be committing these crimes, those who are anonymous. However, this person's name is not just something that you, you search up. It's something that, um, you know, the incredible technology that Google and Facebook and all these things have, um, it's the incredible technology they have, algorithm, algorithms, beyond our comprehension that actually allow them to track down these people who are committing these crimes. They can even uh, track down your, your location, your, you know, the address from which you are actually doing the, committing these crimes. Now, we cannot allow these, yeah, because of the detrimental impacts they're having on our society, we cannot allow them to, these things to continue because for years, for the, for the years that Google ha and the internet have been so um, kind of impactful and, uh, and powerful, in uh, essentially aiding this crime to occur. It has um, not been regulated in any way. It's been um, essentially let to reign. And these days people are, you know, the law has been incredibly good at, um, you know, trying to combat crime. You know, we do accept that, um, you know, law enforcement has began to take a toll online. However, the incre incredibly rapid rate at which the internet and these ways of um, communication are developing are not being combated at the same rate the law is, is, should be combating them in the same way. Yes, please. Why is a mafia boss yes, Dundee Perry. Why is a mafia boss who really wants money suddenly going to be deterred at the point at which he might have his name seen online? 
Hutchison's um, High School. Yes, well, uh, obviously these huge mafia lords, they have other ways of protecting their identities, protecting their locations, and their, you know, they have so, many, so much power otherwise. However, the organised crime groups that the police are not able to get through and who are much more um, able to commit these crimes due to the anonymous aspect of um, online communication, these are the people who will remain um, essentially under wraps and totally undetectable as long as we have um, th this ability to disguise ourselves and to essentially mask who one is. Um, in today's day and age, people are actually um, able to face-to-face -face see who is committing crimes. There's a very much uh, more of a personal kind of aspect of committing a crime one-to-one. -one. And this fact that these people have been dehumanized, they've been masked, they are totally um, undetectable and for the police to now um, have this, uh, this ability to track them can prevent so much in, uh, horrific crime that is, a, that is occurring. Secondly, the, um, oh no, thank you. Progressively, also, uh, as my uh, previous speakers have also Last already minute. mentioned. Thank you. Um, you know, bullying is an incredibly horrific thing. It's impacting so many millions of youths online um, around the globe. And having, you know, that's why it's a major influence of skyrocketing mental health issues in the UK. Now, this, uh, there, as I said, is currently no regulation online um, for, you know, trying to track down these people. And because, as we mentioned, this, this aspect of of a human being there. This, uh, this is kind of what they've missed throughout the, throughout the whole of the bench and the other on team opposition, is this idea that the reason people don't believe when there's a name there is because they, they, that screen, that, that barrier has been taken away of it becoming more human, becoming more personalized, instead of this detached thing, this detached person that you're insulting um, just for the sake of it. Also, um, lastly, I'd, I'd just like to say this idea of um, human rights. And although we, we, we would like to clearly acknowledge that human rights are incredibly essential for our population, for our society, we do think that this debate is a matter of should we prioritize the rights of humans, the rights of human speech or freedom of speech, or should we prioritize the people who are actually being harmed by these, these disgusting things that are happening online. These people are, are continuing um, to have this outlet for crime, for bullying, for fraud, and therefore we have to just, in a sense, we have to sacrifice certain aspects of human rights if we want to um, stop these from happening. Um, uh, and you must the, conclude. Okay. Uh, someone on the other side mentioned this aspect of passports, and for uh, us... And that conclude means conclude. Okay, thank you. Can I just end my sentence? One line. Okay. Um, so for people to be able to benefit from the incredible things that the internet has to offer, we have to pay a price, and that is sacrificing that element of anonymity, and that is why I believe that we should propose this motion. Yes, Thank but I was you. being very, I'm much more generous with you than I am with the MSPs, let me tell you. Uh, well done. Uh, it's a shame you take a point of information, you don't get extra time. I usually give extra time, but that's not the rules here. Anyway, uh, thank you. I'd now like to call the first speaker from Dundee, Perth, to open the case for the closing opposition team, please. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, when I log on to 4chan as Fishinator76 and vent about how people in full-time education can't use free public transport, those radical views are contained. They are contained in a safe space. At the point at which my safe space had been invaded, I'm going to get mad, I'm going to push to more extreme methods. Today, in my speech, I'm going to be focusing on one main substantive point, about how at the point at which the alt-right safe spaces are invaded, they're going to, mu uh, they're going to move towards violent and extreme uh, measures. Uh, but before I go into that, I want to take on uh, some rebuttal of what we've just heard. So uh, we heard like up and down the table like about this bullying point and how like online uh, bullying is uh, really a horrible thing. Now we agree with that analysis. However, like the first thing we'd say, the, the thing about bullying is that it's usually a power dynamic. People usually know, in fact the majority of bullying cases online are just done from like people like peers in school or people that you know. And that is, the, that is because they don't, they have such a power that the victims do not want to reveal their names in general. Like they already have their names out there. They don't want to report them because of the power dynamic beh behind them. But also second, 
secondly, at the point at which like the first speaker openly says we cannot regulate the internet, we don't see how this motion is now going to suddenly like regulate the internet. We think that there's still going to be people who find an honest way to do it. Also, on the criminality point, which has been the second speaker and the third speaker, no thank you. Like when the, the, the second the, the third speaker like openly conceded that people will find ways to still be anonymous when I, uh, to my mafia POI, like we think that's an open concession as to people uh, being able to hide uh, like their criminality activity even under this motion. No thank you. But let's like, like take them at their best and say like somehow mafia bosses and terrorists aren't going to be able to do this. If I'm a terrorist and I like want Sharia law in the West, like I'm not going to suddenly be deterred at the point at which my name might be seen by the police. I'm going to look for more extreme efforts. I'm probably going to want to meet face to face with other people that agree with me, or I'm going to find like other ways to try and per uh, participate awful attacks on the West. So after that, onto my main point. So what we see uh, about alt right, sorry. So people uh, who voice opinions online, they create like this little safe space for them. Like there are two main articles of. of of clarification here. So the reason why they put it online is because there's relatively like little real world consequences at the point at which I post on 4chan, but somebody's not going to like write a massive headline about me and it's going to like not get in the mainstream uh, news. But also like secondly, we think those views are like put into a group of people that agree with me and that I'm going to like be seen and heard behind an anonymity ask, like people are uh, anonymously mask. Like people are going to agree with my views and that's going to be something that I agree with. Now under the status quo, we already see the internet is like very much divided. There's a a lot of unpopular opinions, there's a lot of alt-right being stoked. Now what has this led to? Like we already see like a minority of uh, like really right-wing um, extremists have already turned to violent protests, like Charlottesville as an example. We also see the BNP in like Northwest London, despite their membership decreasing. The internet is stoking this type of hate. Now what we see is at the point at which that individual safe space is now invaded, they're going to feel very much attacked by liberals, by the government in general. Note, ladies and gentlemen, that that is the narrative that they feed into all the time. That they are constantly talking about the government like coming and invading their safe space and taking away their voice. So what am I going to do as an alt-right person at the point at which my narrative has now just come true? Like I feel like I cannot have my anonymity online. We still there's going to be three main impacts of this. We're probably going to like take to the streets. Now at best it's going to be like protests about really unpopular opinions like misogyny, like casual racism. That's probably not going to be good. But we're also going to like a certain level of violence. Like we already see like in the minority and under the status quo, like we already have that amount of violence. It will only increase, as I'll go on to say in my reasons as to why this happened. Secondly, I'll take you in a moment. Secondly, uh, secondly we see that their violence is probably going to get into the mainstream more. That's going to legitimize their, the, legitimize their views. Yes, please. We're not stopping freedom yes, of expression. Yes, decent, Georgia. Um, we're not stopping freedom of expression. You can still express yourselves under our side of the house. We're just revealing your name so you don't express views that are going to hurt others. A oh, Dundee fine. Perth, just down, we're ready. Yes, go for it. I, I, no, I will get on to that speech, but like, uh, finally, the third, the third point that you're going to get is that the point at which someone is now has their, face, their safe space uh, invaded, they're going to want to get revenge on the people they see as doing it. So they're now going to use this new like non-anonymous uh, non clause to find liberal campaigners and deliberately dox them or swat them in a way to try and like lead delegitimize them and like put them in a small space. So why is this going to happen? So we think like three main reasons. First of all, at the point at which my only outlet, if I'm like someone with a neck beard who knows how to uh, run a computer, my only outlet is like going into my basement and typing really unpopular opinions. When that final space is like being invaded, I'm going to want to get that back. I'm going to be very furious at the point at which my only outlet for my own popular opinions is now being taken away. Secondly, the narrative of the government has constantly been like, we do not like the alt-right, we need to find a way to stop them. At the point at which the government is now finding a way to do that, they're not going to find it happy. They're going to see that that is their, that is their narrative legitimized. And thirdly, politicians will undoubtedly frame this in a very liberal manner in terms of saying, like, the reason why we are doing this is because we don't want, like, alt-right bullying, as we've already heard from side proposition. Like, this shows that the alt-right are probably going to want to get back at that. And the reason why this is an important point is because the scale is a lot larger than any other point given here. The alt-right are more organized. The violence is much more important than anything that has been given so far in the debate. And it is more intense. So for all the reasons I've told you today, I beg you to vote side opposition. Thank you very much. <laughs> I now call the second speaker from Hutchison's High School, Glasgow, to conclude the case for the proposition, please. <laughs> I hope that wasn't your memoirs. Yep. No, right, on you go. Um, Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to be um, saying some points of clash. The main points of clash I've identified today is whether or not it's truly 
beneficial for victims and secondly about freedom of speech and whether political views are truly um, protected. Now some rebuttal, um, just about the bullying issue. Bullying we think has been trivialised in this debate by side opposition. It's not just name calling, it's not just calling people silly, it's not just trivial like playground bullying, right? It's death threats against people in the LGBT community. It's telling people in transgender that they, uh, uh, people who are transgender that they have no place in society. It's tearing apart minority groups. It's telling people that they don't belong in society. It's, it's soul destroying, it's crushing. We think the opposition has like trivialized this into something that's unimportant. Um, and more importantly, that kind of um, cyberbullying, which it is still classed as, can be anonymous. Anyone can go on who feels um, that LGBTQ people do not deserve rights. Anyone can go on and send a death threat to someone um, who is LGBT. And it's that kind One of, um, it's those kind of comments that are truly um, detrimental to mental health. And it's those kind of comments um, and that kind of, um, those kind of feelings that we want to prevent with this motion. No, thank you. Now, um, on to my um, main points of clash. Is anonymity truly beneficial for the victims? Well, um, because um, OP has mentioned that it may have some um, benefits. Um, well, OP thinks that it's harmful to take away people's an anonymity online and that it gives people a comfort. Um, however, we would say that it's crucial to weigh up the pros and the cons. While it's true that people might feel comfortable showing their personalities online, saying things that they might not normally say, we have to co um, compare with this with shutting down the dark web, like, right? Um, a hub of highly illegal criminal activity, no thank you, that's um, allowed to thrive and flourish in places where people can um, not access it when it is truly anonymous, right? It's almost inaccessible. It's not just gonna be Googling the name of a mafia criminal. There'll be, um, there'll be lines of codes attached. There'll be algorithms. There'll be um, coders that work for the government. They'll be able to trace these people in a way that, I don't know, typing your name onto Facebook, it's not going to reveal the same kind of things. And we think making that comparison isn't really sufficient, right? It's going to, um, people will be able to track these people in a way that's different to a Google search, um, ha leaving an online um, trail um, that police are able then to um, track is different and it's um, better, right? Uh, yes, please. You yes, Merkison Beasley. The proposition previously stated that it would really only be the names that we would be getting, and I raised in my own speech that I don't understand how, with just the name, the police will then be able to track with the uh, proposition, therefore be able to maybe clarify how the police are going to do this with just a name. That's just nice. Right, well, I'm not a computer engineer, I'm not a coding expert, I don't have a degree in computer science, but it's not going to be the same as typing in your name onto a Facebook search, right? It might be the name that gets shown online to the display, but to the people behind the scenes, to the government, to the police department, it's going to be so much more than that. It's going to be highly advanced, it's going to be something that a group of school children can't pick apart in a five minute debate, right? Um, yeah, so the internet is an extension of society, like, and there's um, little to no um, regulation in, um, on the status quo, whereas in real life we're expected to give our passports, there are CCTVs everywhere, there is regulation, right, to an extent. Um, we don't feel that it hinges, um, infringes on our privacy because we know it's for the better good, and the same argument applies with online anonymity. We feel that it's not dangerous, no thank you. We see the benefits in not being on, um, anonymous online because although we may have to give up our privacy like my partner stated, we know that it's for the better cause. Um, no thank you. Now, addressing the issue about freedom of speech and alt-right, what we want to say is that we don't really think that freedom of speech will be harmed under this motion. No, thank you. Um, in the UK, Last we do minute. have freedom of speech to an extent, right? We can say things that um, we, we, can, we can share our opinions. We're allowed to have views. We have a political sp um, spectrum. It's from the left to the right to the center. We are allowed to differ in political um, views. And we do think that freedom of speech will not be violated, right? Because you are allowed to share your opinions because people know who you are. We don't really think that that should take away because we don't think it's necessarily shameful as... Um, the opposition says to have all right views and that they are being attacked we think that instead um, if more people do turn to show their names and project their all right views that they will find more people who believe the same things they will find a comfort they will find um, a group of people who can share the same views as them and they will not have to turn to those hateful methods that um Trump has suggested to share their political views right um unless of course it's something that's against human rights, if it's illegal, that's the kind of activity that we want to target, but we think that the more people that express all right views online on and without a non-anonymity, 
We think that's um, more beneficial. It gives people more spaces. It allows people to find people who are similar to them and um, it ensures that their political freedoms are not violated. Freedom of speech is held intact because anything you can say face to face, you can say online, unless of course it's illegal. And it's exactly th that kind of illegal speech um, that infringes on people's rights, um, detriments um, their being, um, contributes to the dark web and is, is um, a hub of illegal activity that we want to um, that we want to end and for all these reasons we wish to propose the motion. Thank you very much. I now call on the final speaker from Dundee Perth to conclude the case for the opposition please. Thank you. Today I have identified three main points of clash. The first being bullying and what this motion will do for that. The second being online crime and that's broken down into dark web and organized crime like some mafias, and the third being extreme views um, and what this motion will occur. So first, bullying. Will it help trolls or will it help everyone else? Will this motion help trolls or will this motion help everyone else? Well, we've heard from the government that it will help bullying. Well, a lot of bullying doesn't just happen from random fake accounts hurling abuse at another random account online, but it's bullies who are known to the victims, possibly from school or other real life occasions, and they're using Facebook as a vessel for the bullying. This motion will do nothing for this, and this was mentioned but not addressed. So on opposition side, we see trolls being able to find their victim's house, being able to find their victim's personal information online due to the increasing prevalence of linked medias. What's the impact of this? Well, there's not only increased bullying um, in real terms, but, not, but there's more fraud One and higher else. levels of bullying, and we see blackmail. So this motion was designed to stop all this, but actually it's making this worse. So in a point of information, closing government actually conceded this, saying that yes, they're negative to both sides, trying to negate that argument, but this does not stand up because the negative effect that this motion will have is grossly outweighed, sorry, the, ne the positive effect this motion will have is grossly outweighed by the, the negative effect. And even if we take you at your best, the positive effect is minute. And that brings me on to my second point of clash um, to do with what this will occur with online crime. Um, first, the dark web. So you've completely misconstrued the dark web. Dark web is about 70% of the internet. It's not a grand bazaar of drugs and guns. It's just the internet that search engines, for example, Google, cannot search to do with the meta tags they have. Um, so <laughs> the whole point of the dark web is there are no accounts. You can't, be not an, you can't be not anonymous because there are no accounts. So in fact, what this motion will do is not only, it will not reduce the dark web, but it will, people will in flux move to the dark web because they realize it's the only way that they can be anonymous online, which people like. Now that, I'd just like to input a little bit of rebuttal in there um, about people not liking this motion. The closing government stated that LGP, LGBTQ and plus people will be helped by this motion. Well, if that's the case, then why did that community organize a protest against Facebook's real name policy, which was trying to force online anonymity? It seems like there's a, a problem there in that argument. Now, onto the second point of online crime. No, thank you. Onto the second point of online crime, um, which is organized online crime. So we've, we also heard that mafia bosses have other ways of hiding their identities. So now not only are mafia bosses able to accurately find their victims' information online, but are still anonymous. This is the worst of both situations. We, as highlighted, receive no mechanism as to how you're going to enforce people. So even if you have ID cards, there are things like fake ID and the vast criminal networks have the resources, if they've got the resources to ship cocaine across the world, I think they've got the resources to become on, um, on anonymous online. And we receive no mechanism or no, no, no analysis as to why this isn't the case. So we see no reason why large scale criminal and terrorist movements will be deterred by this uh, motion. The impact would be horrendous, putting information into terrorist hands. Need I explain more? Terrorist attacks, you're giving them more. Sorry, I'll take your point of information now. Decent, George. We can stop fake back bank accounts, as my partner said. This is it. This is just going to use the same thing. Dundee Perth. We can still stop fake bank accounts. We can ping people's IPs and find out where their computer is and destroy their bank accounts if they're criminals. We currently do this under our side of the house. All you're doing is allowing the criminal organisations to find people who are not a mass network of money and power. All they're able, the people, they're they're able to find people who are not able to protect themselves the way the yes, mafia will be able to on your side of the house. So that brings me on to my third point of clash to do with extremist views we've heard about. Fortran, Reddit, they're places of hate, granted, but they're not places of hate 
Reddit and 4chan do not drive cars into protests or fly planes into buildings. As a society, we're on a knife edge, and this motion will cause a, quite frankly, scary tip towards violence. We had a rebuttal against this, but it did not deal with the analysis, which was that the alt-right have a safe space where they can vent their views, and currently, I'm sorry, and on your side of the house, if you destroy that safe space, and yes, they can still have the views, but they no longer feel safe in voicing these views. They're not going to say, oh, well, then maybe my views were incorrect. I'll just stop and not voice my views anymore. They're going to turn to other, more extreme methods, as we've heard in our analysis. And what's the impact of this? Well, it goes into mainstream. And it, um, and it, they find more people like them because it's a more vocal protest instead of just some, some whack job shouting about it online. So yes, there, there are three points of clash. Bullying, we went on that because it will make it easier for bullies and worse for victims. Online crime, you're going to make the dark web worse and you're going to help mafia and terrorists and extreme views. All you're going to do is alienate and isolate the alt-right and, and terrorist organizations and anyone who feels prejudiced by this motion. This is why you must, must oppose this motion. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, um, can I thank all eight speakers for their contributions? Can I ask you to thank them for their contributions? <laughs> and uh, hands up, who knows what a meta tag is? Well, you should know because you mentioned it. Do you know what a meta tag is? You do? Well, does anybody else know what a meta tag is? Well, you'll need to explain to us later about that. Anyway, uh, if I can now ask the judges to leave us to deliver it, what will be a very difficult decision. And if I could ask you please to return in about 20 minutes. Thank you very much. I just think I'll need to Google meta tag and find out what it is. We'll all be doing it, but not right now. Now, we now move on to the floor debate. This is your chance. This will last for 30 minutes. I'll invite speakers from the floor to raise points in relation to the debate and points you've just heard. If you wish to speak, just please raise your hand. And if selected, you should wait for the red light to come on on your microphone uh, um, and tell the chamber your name, and the name of your school or university before you raise your point. This is extremely important since I need to identify a winner. What's the prize? Is it a trip to the sun? We Wait. don't know. Oh, well, can't promise you that because I don't know. Uh, please limit your contributions to one minute. You too can see the clocks. Um, if there is time, I may ask the teams to respond or contribute to points from the floor debate. And remember, I say again, there's a prize, possibly not a trip to the sun, uh, for the best floor speech of the evening. Right, can I have some brave soul to put their hand... Well done. Right, now, your lights now. Is your light come on? That's it. Just give us your name, please, and the name of your school. Matthew Burton, Bearstown Academy. Oh. <laughs> 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 Well, that was very dramatic, Matthew. No need to say any more. Was that the dark web? <laughs> On you go. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the clear issues in this debate has been the duality of the effects of this motion. Whether we are exposing criminals or stripping the vulnerable of a much needed shelter of anonymity. And it is true from a really basic perspective that we're hurting both in equal measure. But what we've got to remember is that there's a real difference between the criminals and the law-abiding citizens we seek to protect. Criminals will break the law, have sh been shown to do it, and will do it again. The law-abiding citizens we seek to protect will not. Ladies and gentlemen, this motion does not hurt criminals. It exposes the vulnerable and strips away the much-needed shelter of anonymity. And for that reason, we must preserve online anonymity. Thank you very much. Right, somebody else now to take them on. Right, just stand up and your light should come on. That's it, thank you. Um, so I'm Doa Shavir from HSOG. Just 
You make your point, yes. Okay, um, so I sort of want to make a point about the idea of um, societal platforms and changing perceptions of what are radical ideas. Um, so sort of what I want to say is sort of in response to what opposition has said about, um, say, for example, people who are LGBT, they're not able to come out to the community about it. We think that, I sort of think that when you divert discussion from real life forums, um, what, it, what, what that does is it doesn't send as many signals to a society that progression is needed. So say, for example, if I point to the example of, say, the Iranian in green revolution, right? If these young people weren't actually going out on the street and saying we want our votes to be respected and they went on like 4chan or Reddit to do it instead, we think that that wouldn't have actually sent a like appropriate message to society that change is needed, which is why we think that having this online capture where you can say things instead of making people go out into the real world can do it can sort of be harmful and have um, negative social externalities. Thank you very much. Another volunteer. This is good. Yes. Please, just stand up, say your name in school. Um, Rodan Stewart. Stewart, um, I'm from Merkiston. Um, this really more takes the form of a question. Um, we've seen, we have seen this, similar things done before, for example, the, the Chinese model, where the government has largely cut off uh, most of the population to the wider internet. Of course, most of the internet is not hosted in Scotland, it's hosted in places like America. So how would this be enforced? Um, you can't force American companies to do this. The majority of their market is not in Scotland. What's to stop them simply cutting off Scotland from their services? Um, and therefore, what would replace it? It semi works in China because they have such a large population, but with the relatively small population of Scotland, the, the benefits of these worldwide online services surely would be massively impacted, seen as we simply wouldn't have access to them. Thank you. Anybody else now? Yes, thank you. I'm having the clock set to zero, uh, the bottom part, so you can see me if I had a minute. Right. Okay, uh, so I'm Megan McNulty from the University of Stirling. Um, and for a rather dramatic start, as the gay person who came from a very religious background, I would love that um, I didn't have to hide behind the screen as a child. But now that I'm older, I would love uh, to be able to know those that tormented me and to know that they are brought to justice. Um, the opposing gentleman said that cyberbullying would not be stopped uh, with a ban on online anonymity. South Korea did this in 2007 and witnessed a 20% drop in five years in cyberbullying. Now, considering 43% uh, of children uh, out of 20,000 surveyed in the UK in 2016 and experienced cyberbullying, 32% um, of which was serious threats of harm and death threats. I would love for these people to be able to have their names and their IP addresses released so that people uh, don't have to deal with these terrors behind the screen. So I would just like to know your views on um, those uh, numbers and what you think of that. Thank you. Yes, of course. Just say your name in school. <laughs> Fraser McDonald from Perth High School. Um, I would love for the people that tormented you and others in your society to be named and shamed, but I don't think this motion is the way to do it because of the other negative impacts that it has on society. Now, possibly it has worked in South Korea on a bullying metric, but I think on other metrics, like South Korea does have a massive gang problem and it does have a great music scene, but there are, there are issues in South Korea. And I think that it, sh it says a lot that a lot of the... A lot of the LGBT, um, LGBTQ plus community, you'll have to forgive me, I'm not quite, <laughs> um, is not in favour of uh, this motion. Now, personally, you might be, but I think as a whole, the people have accepted that it w is not a good step forward. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? Yes? Just stand up. Yep. I'm Fergus Dugan. I'm from Perth High School. Uh, so the government's mechanism, or lack thereof, was briefly touched upon, yet not fully rebutted. They referred to bank accounts in adopting their mechanism, whereby fake names would be considered fraud. Yet there are infinite situations in the real world where one's legal name is not appropriate. John F. Kennedy, were he alive today, would undoubtedly have a bank card and a Twitter account. His bank card would say John F. Kennedy, his legal name. But if he went by on Twitter Jack Kennedy or JFK, neither of which are his legal name, would that be considered fraud? Uh, or a celebrity in the modern day, Sia, 
a singer famous for her anonymity. Nobody's ever seen her face, and C is not her real name. Under this motion, she would have, uh, be unable to have any social media presence without it being considered fraud. This seems to be the most impractical motion the government could have come up with. I think I see a legal career looming for that gentleman about to give legal advice. Um, yes? Anyone else? Yes, please. Have you spoken already? Yes. You were the dark web? Well, is there anybody else coming in before Mr. Dark Web? Yes, thank you. Uh, I'd like to speak a bit about the power of the corporations. Uh, sorry, Don Knight Westwood, uh, High School of Dundee. Um, which wasn't something that was really touched on this debate. So we're actually reaching a turning point in our technology, where soon algorithms will actually know more about us than we know, uh, than we know ourselves. And who actually holds this information? Well, it's actually in the control of the unelected multinational corporations. And we, do we really want these people to control our every lives? We think that our anonymity is the only thing that protects us from companies like Facebook, who, why, while they may have good intentions now, are actually controlling more and more of our lives and influence our elections and influencing the products we buy. We think, I think that actually user anonymity is the only thing that can protect us from this horrible future. And it's something that should have been mentioned more in this debate. Thank you very much. Uh, anybody else before I return? Somebody's already asked a question. Anybody else want to come in? You tell me two over. Yes, sorry, we've got someone. Where, where are you? Ah, please just stand up and your light will come on. Name and school. Hi, um, Aubrey Agab, Hermitage Academy. So um, us, the everyday citizens, you know, everyday law-abiding citizens, we're the ones who use the majority of, like, you know, the internet with good reasons and, you know, do good actions in it. So why do we have to suffer the consequences of the actions of the minuscule number of people who are the perpetrators of, you know, criminal activities um, online? Right. <laughs> MDLs, yes, please come in. Yes. Um, Alex Fish, High School Dundee. Uh, so, like, the main reason why we do that and why the government uh, would, like, be, uh, why, why we, we think criminals are probably a big factor in this debate is because at the point at which criminals are harming those law-abiding law citizens, we think there's a, a point where the government cannot allow a motion that would continually be detrimental uh, to law-abiding citizens in general. That's why the government passes any uh, motion. We don't think that a motion that's going to help criminals is going to help law-abiding citizens in general. Yes, anybody else? Yes? I'm John Bryce from Merkiston. I have a question towards proposition, uh, and I ask that, are they aware that the police, and especially the Metropolitan Police, already have a team of specialists that specialize in hunting down people that do perceive themselves to be anonymous and commit crimes whilst being anonymous, and they use much more uh, effective methods than simply knowing their names, they use geotracking, and they use um, tri-point coordination, things like that, where they're able to actually find their location and find their IP more than just their name. And it seems to be much more effective than simply uh, not allowing an anonymity for all people on the internet. Yes, is anybody going to rise? Yes. Um, yeah, that's uh, an excellent your, your, point. Your name again. Oh, uh, Sophia Alvey, High School Glasgow. Um, yeah, although I do appreciate your point, I think that it's actually just kind of showing how important it is for the police to get involved and how um, it's not just the crimes that are being that are taking place because of um, online online anonymity, <laughs> anonymity, um, but it's also just the fact that um, for cyberbullying, just you know, it's it's, it's essentially about the outweighing of um, you know crime being easier to uh, combat, which as you can as you've just said, it already is um, trying to be combated. But we we feel that this would aid it quite quite significantly. Um, because when people know the name of someone, that's very much something they can use to track. Someone's name is essentially their, their identity. And so we think that, it, again, yeah, it's about how the greater impact and the, and the bigger picture as well, though. So, thanks. Thank you. MD else? Yes, I'll take one. I'll take you first, then I'll take you next. So if you stand uh, up first, thank you. Jude Watson, Adrian Academy. Uh, while your point was very valid, um, I'd like to zero in the fact that you were mentioning the police and how they need to get involved. The police, with a lot of cybercrime, the getting rid of anonymity wouldn't get rid of privacy, per se. So, say you're in an internet chat room with somebody and they're say, they say, hey, let's kill this person because I don't like them. You don't, you don't agree with that, you'll report it to the police and if they're not anonymous, they'll go to jail. If you agree with them, the two of you now have a safe space 
to plan this. Just because you know who each other are doesn't mean you're going to report it. And again, like the uh, opposition mentioned, with the deep web, um, there are no accounts. And if you're not properly protected, they can use it as a vehicle to, the deep web can use it to, as a vehicle to attack you, and they're much more well protected than you are. They, there have been cases of people whose IP address isn't protected going on the deep web, being found out, and people arriving at their house who they've never met before to murder them. And in this case, the police wouldn't be much help. Cleaning up after the fact is not what we need to be doing. I'm a wee bit confused. Is there a deep web and a dark web? Or are they both the same? They're both, it's a deep dark web. That's fine. Right, next please. Melissa Roger, Edgar Academy. Um, so there's a separate community called Role Players Online who take um, characters from films or from comic books or from manga um, and claim to be them in order to create um, what would be called fan fiction, basically creating your own story with another person as the character. Would they be considered fraudsters for claiming to be something else too? Well, I don't know the answer. Somebody better get up and try to answer that. Who could answer that if you take an assumed persona? Yes, please. Um, no, they would not because we don't think that's criminal activity. So, um, and if all, they would ha all that would happen was they would publish this fan, fan fiction under their own identity instead of using another identity. Uh, Bob, you've been in, so I'm just going to take people who've not been in yet. So I've got two people who want to come back in. Are there any, anybody who's not asked a question? Yes? Uh, Holly Edgar from Indians High School. I think what um, side opposition has maybe missed is that uh, anonymity, anonymity can be essential to our society, um, especially professional anonymity. Um, for example, there are many teachers in the room. Many teachers are, un are not allowed to have their own uh, name as their profile in case teachers find them. Um, and um, with the same token with people who are under witness protection, perhaps for seeing things. Uh, we do not want to put lives in danger just so we can find people easier. Some people do not want to be found. And I think as a democratic and respectful society. We have to respect that. Thank you. Anybody else that's not been in already? Well, I'll return to you and then I'll... Matthew and somebody else who's, who's oh, waiting? Sorry. Ah, right, please, thank you. Uh, everyone new to Mission Danny, Hutchinson's Grammar School. I think what's been sort of missing from both sides of the debate is specifically what the dark web is used for and it's by it's obviously by criminals who have decided to create something because the normal web wasn't good enough for their sort of criminal activity this, these are people who devote their lives trying to steal trying to be criminals if you if this um law is implemented they're not they're simply just not going to follow this just because the new law has come in doesn't mean the criminals will start just becoming law-abiding citizens criminals have been seen to sort of you have been sort of have been seen to create this sort of new material that's how the dark web became about and if this on if this if this would go through then the criminals would just find something new to use to take over that this isn't really going to really achieve anything thank you anybody else uh, you've been in before so i'll keep you in the backstop Anybody else new? Right then, so I'll come first of all to Matthew, and then I'll come to Fergus, and then I'll come to yourself. Uh, Matthew Burton, Bearsend Academy. So there's been talk about uh, a lot of bullying in this debate, and uh, the lady in the front row there mentioned, um, mentioned about her own personal experience of uh, bullying and stuff like that. And I think one of the key issues surrounding bullying has been whether anonymity online really helps that and I'd, I've got to say I'm really with side opposition on this one because I believe online bullying is often conducted without anonymity 
It's people using standard named public accounts to make fun of others. And I think that's caused not so much by anonymity, it's by the physical separation of the bullies from their victims and from the physical cues and emotional cues of that situation, which would normally hold them back. And I think um, removing online an anonymity does little to address that, which is the root cause of cyberbullying. Thank you. I call Fergus, followed by Melissa. You said in reply to a point about uh, role-playing and assumed personas, that that wouldn't be considered fraud, that would be fine under your side of the house, but that directly goes against your own metric, which was you'd uh, use the, the same kind of system as banks, whereby uh, names that went your legal name would be considered fraud, that wouldn't be allowed. Um, so if I assumed the character of, say, Doctor Who, I couldn't go and get a bank card that said Doctor Who on it, and so under your side of the house, neither could I create a Twitter account that said Doctor Who either. Yes, you can respond. Uh, well, maybe we could um, some, have some sort of alternative where these people who want to kind of fully immerse themselves in the persona that they want to kind of create this fan fiction with could still just include like their, their true identity as a sort of like email or like a link that you can get to. And almost like if you go onto their account and look hard enough, then they will have to put it on before they actually apply to, before they actually participate in this. But maybe you could have like, their title name as Doctor Who, if you know what I mean. Yeah, so just have that information available, but still be able to kind of have their persona. Melissa. I also want to mention the issue of swatting. Um, that's when uh, it's usually happened to streamers online uh, during live streams where anonymous people call up um, a SWAT team to invade the home of the uh, person on live stream so that they can watch the police come in with the guns um, and hold them down, handcuff them. How, how would that end up um, affecting your um, argument as it would be very difficult to trace phone calls like this under anonymous ways, um, especially because so many uh, different people have used burner phones, stuff like that, to call the SWAT team in the first place. Right, um, I don't see any more hands. What I thought, I, oh, oh, as soon as soon as I say that, you know, it's the same in Parliament, I'll say nobody else wants to speak. Forrester, hands goes up. Who, who is it that wants Holy. to? Holly, you've been in before, have you? Right, off you go. Um, I think a point which has been missed by perhaps by side proposition is about age ratings. For example, social media has come up quite a lot. The age uh, where you're allowed to get a Facebook profile is 13, but um, at that age, you're still considered a child um, and your details should definitely not be found uh, widely available on the internet. Furthermore, there are some social medias which you have to use through school, such as, um, in my, my experience, we've had to use Pinterest. Um, we're not allowed to put our own um, names up there for our own protect protection. And by removing this anonymity, we are um, going to be exposing children and their details to people who might abuse these, um, these facts. Uh, thank you. I, I knew this would be complicated because it's a very complicated debate, but I'm going to ask one person from each team because it takes us up to give you two or three minutes. Um, well, you don't know if they want you to do it on your side. You put your hand up, right? Oh, did you? Were you selected? Oh, you had a wee discussion. Oh, ah, there himself. you go then. <laughs> what about a wee discussion over here? Who's going to come up and say for the proposition, just do a wee summing up on what you've heard. It's not part of the competition, but it's interesting. Well, while you're having your wee discussion, which looks at like a long discussion, I'll come to you, please, and you're going to make some comments, maybe two or three minutes, please, on what's been said. Um, I'd just like to um, talk about a comment made from, I can't remember quite who it was, it was um, a lady over on this side, to do with the Iranian green um, policy. Now, obviously, this is a great thing, and, but I think 
the part of the reason that this could have come about is because a few Iranian teenagers or young people who are conscientious about the environment got together online and said, look, we should protest about this. But if the government and all the people who don't think um, the environment should be protected know exactly who they are, then they're going to be massively hindered. And I know that it's probably not as pertinent in that case because I'm not sure many people are going to actually commit violence stopping someone protest about the environment. But there are a few more pertinent cases. For example, um, in Saudi Arabia, where LGBT rights are pretty much non-existent, um, the internet acts as a method of people getting to know other people in that community in Saudi Arabia and outside of Saudi Arabia, um, and finding ways and talking to each other, finding ways of coping and dealing, and it can lead to protest. So I think that, I mean, in Iran, they don't have, in Iran, sorry, they have internet um, anon anonymity, which is why something like this can happen. I think if you take that away, you're opening up the people who are trying to do good to a world of abuse and onslaught from the very people that we should be trying to show they're wrong. And that, that sort of brings me on to another thing I wanted to talk about, which was, um, it feels like this motion is a plaster over a broken leg, and it's trying to deal with things like homophobia, racism, um, bullying, sexism, but really we should just be dealing with those issues in education and in society as a whole, instead of just releasing people's names online. I, I'm, as we've said, I really don't think that's gonna help at all. Yeah, that's all I've got to say. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you very much. Now, does somebody want to just say a few closing words for the other side? Okay. Um, the first thing I want to say is the internet is worldwide. That's the thing about it. It crosses barriers. It crosses borders. It allows people to be in contact with people from anywhere across the world. And because it is international, it is incredibly difficult to regulate. It's hard enough to regulate um, a tiny country, right? Um, it's, it's impossible to find legislation that fits the entire world. When you have societies that are so, uh, and like dynamics and political climates that are so vastly different, right? It's impossible to find legislation that neatly encapsulates all of these different ideas and um, levels of privacy and, and, um, and freedom, um, which is why this, this debate is so hard. Um, but we think that any progress that's done under, the, um, under this side of the debate is, is, um, is useful and therefore it's, it's a step forward in trying to tackle crime. We understand that it's not perfect and there are many safe spaces that are destroyed and we get that, but hopefully um, in time this, this creates um, a more tolerant society perhaps where people don't feel the need for safe spaces because people are able to give their few, um, views more openly and it is still behind the screen right um you are still saying things it's not like you're saying it to their um your face and if they don't like like it they'll punch you in the face it's still behind a screen but um it, it's it's more open we we want you to um it increases confidence it um it does it feel it makes groups feel like they don't need to be um locked away whether that be the old right or the lgbt um groups um it shows them that um, if their views aren't in hidden way in safe spaces and in public limelight, then they get more uh, mentioned and they're more accepted in society. And um, yeah, that's what we want to say. Um, in terms of protesters, um, as, I, as I mentioned earlier, it's, it's impossible to cater for um, legislation across the world, which is why this debate was set in the West, which, have similar, which has similar ideals. Um, but um, because protesting is legal in this country, we don't really feel that that would hamper any rights in this country. Thank you, thank you very much. There you are. Now, uh, Judge is due in back in, in five minutes. I thought, well, we'll just have a wee break for five minutes. You can stretch your legs, don't leave the room, just stretch your legs and so on, and then we'll start with the announcements.
Right, uh, thank you. Oh, golly. <laughs> Hey, that's everything tonight. Um, thank you very much. Extremely interesting and a very difficult topic to nail down. I think that's why I chose it. I don't think there's any easy solutions. So here's the prize winners. The prize to the best contribution of the floor is, from Fer is to Fergus Dugan of Perth High School. A budding lawyer, if I ever saw one. Come down, Fergus. You don't get a holiday in the sun, but you do get a quake. <laughs> Thank you. And if you stand here, we'll get a picture with you getting your quake. You want to be a lawyer one day? I do, yeah. I knew it. He wants to be a lawyer. I can see him in the court of session yet. Right, where are you, Andrew? You want us here? <laughs> <laughs> Too naughty to ever be a prefect. Right, if you just go back to your seat now, that's your moment. <laughs> <laughs> the final prize goes to the best school speaker of the day, and this year we have joint winners. These are Ksenia Kapaluk from High School of Dundee and Pragna Chalapali from Hutchison's Grammar School. If you come forward, please. After a well-thought final, the runner-up of the 2018 St Andrews Day Debating Championship goes to, drum roll please. Thank you. Merkison Beers Den. The winner of the 2018 St Andrew Day Debating Championship goes to, drum roll. <laughs> Dundee, Perth. Trust somebody in Dundee, I'll remember that. <laughs> and I've got best pupil judge of the day, and that is Adam Mellis from George Watson's College. Adam. <laughs> And almost at an end, I'd like to invite Suzanne Ensom on behalf of the English Speaking Union to say a few words. Suzanne, please. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Presiding Officer, everyone. Um, it's an enormous honour to be able to stand here in front of you um, and speak in this incredible room and I hope that all of the finalists who've just competed and all of you floor speakers have really enjoyed this opportunity. We've certainly had the, the great deal of enjoyment from listening to all of you. It's my pleasure to say a few thank yous today to all the people who've worked so hard to make this happen. Um, I'm aware that it's been a very long day for some and um, 
and that for some of you it's still a long day to come and particularly I'm looking at Nairn and Elgin who I know have a long journey home. Um, I'd like to say a big thank you to the Scottish Parliament for hosting us today. Um, I'd like to thank the Deputy Presiding Officer for chairing and for choosing this motion which has turned out to be just a really fascinating topic and I think one that people will be thinking as they go home about different points that that came up or, or could have come up. Um, from the Scottish Parliament, I would like to thank all of the staff who've looked after us so well today. But I would especially like to thank Douglas Miller and Alice Noble, who have put enormous amounts of work into today. And I would like to give them a round of applause. enormously grateful to the Scottish Government for their support, their generous support um, funding for this event and also their support in, in organising it and making it happen. In particular, I would like to thank Ian Cyril, but I would also like to say a big thank you to the Minister, Mr Bain McPherson, who came along and welcomed people this morning. Um, I'd like to thank the Fair Saturday Foundation. It was really exciting that this event could be part of not only the Winter Festivals, but also Fair Saturday, and we were really delighted about that. I'd like to thank the panel of judges for the final, um, Victoria Groom, Jordan Fotenhauer, Navina Sentil Kumar, and Adam Mellis, and of course our chair, Cameron Wiley. Um, I'd like to thank Navina also for running the tab today. And I'd like to thank all of the people who have been involved with today in terms of chairing the debates, timekeeping, um, and all the judges. I'd like to thank all the students from the universities from across Scotland for being here today, um, mentoring the teams, judging the debates. We're enormously grateful for what you did today to um, to for this event, but also the support that we get from university students on across all of our programmes and indeed all of our other judges across our programmes. We have a busy debating calendar and we are incredibly grateful to the people who turn out on a wet and windy evening to, to judge our heats. Most importantly, I would like to thank you, the schools, for being here and I'm delighted that so many of you have stayed. A really, it was really great to have so many people here for the final and we're, we're very grateful to you all, both the pupils, the reserve speakers, the teachers, everybody who, um, who, who, who came today and participated. We hope that you enjoyed it as much as we did. And finally, I really need to thank my colleagues at the English Speaking Union. I'd like to say a big thank you to Jordan Fotenhauer and Simon Christie for all of their hard work. This event takes a lot of planning over a long period of time and then a lot of input on the day. And I think that I would really like to say a big thank you to both of those and also to Cameron for his work for, for the ESU in, in helping us with today. So I'll stop now. I hope I've thanked everybody. Um, I'd really like you all to give yourselves a big round of applause, all the pupils who participated. <laughs> and now I'd just like to wish you a very safe journey home. <laughs>